Uh, what the fuck am I doing with my life? What's up, hood? Today, I'm in a lewd mood. <laughs> really bad opening lines aside, though, Akiba Strip is a game made by a choir. A company you probably won't know from games like Shinobido, the Tenchu series, and also that Rain game what I reviewed a while ago. And where Rain was a quiet, intelligently crafted little art game, this is... Um... Hmm... <clears throat> Obviously, this is a work of art, equal to that of insert famous painter I don't know shit about here. And as a work of art, it is up to talentless hacks like me to splurge all over it so I can pretend I'm just as brilliant as the artist that made it. AKA a review, AKA what I'm doing right now, so I should probably get cracking then, mate. Put some shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> <laughs> the story of Akiba's trip takes place in the mystical land of Akihabara, which as you may or may not know is more or less the weeaboo otaku nerd version of paradise. And by that I mean that there's just a lot of anime around, you guys, oh my god. Living in Akiba, however, is a young man named Nanashi, who's one of them otakus and also maybe our main protagonist. And he, totally exactly as a real otaku, is part of a hip cool club of youngsters who also happen to be the neighborhood watch. And as such, they clearly outweigh the army and the local police in terms of authority. So, when there's vampire mafia in town, because of course there are vampire mafia in town, it is up to them to save the day by undressing them, thus exposing them to the daylight so they'll burn. Yeah. Now, looking at this video so far, you might be thinking a number of things. A likely thought would be, Ugh, anime. Ugh. Or, hey, this kind of looks like Persona 4. Only a bit shit. And in both cases, you would be right. Thing is, is that the art in this game definitely feels a bit manga maker e. Usually in games like this, with a lot of still imagery, they'll at least tend to make it stand out, for better or for worse. Think of games like 999, Danganronpa, Hotel Dusk, etc. It still is anime e, sure, but at least it doesn't look like literally every show on Crunchyroll ever. And and this kind of does. While I wouldn't say that any of the art is at all bad in any way, it is very utilitarian. Which is fine, I guess, but it doesn't really make the game stand out. Overall though, the presentation is actually pretty fucking neat. The game is fully voiced and the characters and dialogue, while a bit stocky, are quite funny. And while it is definitely a bit lewd, it's not an erotic or hentai game. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a smutty guy, but even I have my limits as to what I'll cover. All of it's kinda done in a nudge-nudge-wink-wink tongue-in-cheek kinda way, where it makes fun of the otaku and anime culture more than anything. Hence the setting. And where, as someone who has consumed many a Japanese media, I can see the humor in this, it'll likely be completely lost on everyone who hasn't. And not only that, but there is a fine line between clever issues satire and just straight up becoming what you're trying to make fun of. And by the time the game starts coercing you into a mild incestuous relationship with your little sister, then there might just be a line or two crossed here. Still though, I'd be lying if I said that the funny and charming characters didn't stick with me at all. Great characters like... Uh... Or... Hmm... Yeah... I may have forgotten the names. <coughs> Remember that game I reviewed a while ago called Yakuza? The one with all the Japan in it? Well, <laughs> this game is more or less exactly that. So it's a 3D beat-em-up in a small sandbox-like world, 
in this case Akihabara, with shops, stores and establishments and the odd side quests here and there. Unlike Yakuza though, the fighting is initiated through story, so no random encounters. And the story is initiated by going wherever it is they tell you to go. And as you go there, you'll have the entire city of Akihabara at your disposal. And by entire city, I mean like five or six streets. Yeah. <laughs> The game sandbox is really quite tiny, which is great because then it can load all of it in one go and... Oh. The loading screens in this are pretty fucking abrasive to say the least and plenty in numbers. It kinda comes with the territory I guess you know, like Yakuza. But while the screen transitions in Yakuza were far from sexy, at least they didn't stop all of that sweet walking action. And also, Yakuza was a fucking PS2 game. Now, I know, I know, this game was pretty much ported over to everything, and it originated on the Vita. So I kinda expected the optimization to be a wee bit lacking in some places. Though I figured that that would only limit itself to shoddy textures and stuff, which I'm honestly fine with. But that a game that was made to run on a fucking Vita isn't able to keep up on a PS3 is kinda fucking ridiculous. Like, every 5 seconds or so there'll be a loading screen while traversing town. And the frame rate isn't exactly friendly either. So, it's a pretty good thing then that the game will let you fast travel at just about any time. It's certainly not a graceful solution, but at least these loading screens let you look at actual ads one would see in Akihabara. And more importantly, the loading screens don't matter much during combat either way. The combat in this game is all about stripping people. Sexual. How you do this is by first weakening their clothes, by either attacking their lower body, upper body or head, all of which correspond to three face buttons. So X for legs, triangle for head, that sort of thing. And once a piece of clothing has been degraded enough as indicated by your red glow, it can be ripped off in a blaze of perverted flamboyance. And, should there be multiple degraded clothings in your immediate vicinity, you'll be allowed to strip again without the hassle of fighting them by way of a quick time event. So basically the objective here is to more or less create situations in which you can chain strip and get mad yen bucks and loot. And while it is kind of fun and surprisingly satisfying to mass rip people's shit from their skin, it's hard to ignore just how shallow the combat really is. I mean, for starters, <laughs> the fighting is really, really slow. And some weapons just don't feel good to use at all. In a way, I can kinda see this being done on purpose as to encourage people to upgrade their shit. But making things unfun seems like a very bad idea when the combat isn't all that great to begin with. Nothing terrible, mind you, but just a bit too simple and repetitive for its own good. Like, there aren't really any combos at all and you're also able to fully heal at just about any time during battle, no strings attached. And while there is a shit ton of shit to buy at stores and stuff to win from fighting, there isn't really much here in the way of upgrades either. No longer sexual. You see, the game only lasts about 6 to 7 hours. And while I think its brevity is partially good as the game just isn't strong enough to last much longer, it also kind of fucks with some of its mechanics. I mean, it has this almost kind of complicated RPG-like equipment system going on, where you'll get tons of weaker items from enemies, what you can use to then fuse with others to make stronger items. It's kinda neat, but at the plethora of local shops, you can pretty much buy everything already. I totes had one of the strongest weapons one hour into the game, and after a bit of combining with it, there 
wasn't a whole lot of progression left for me to progress through. And I'm sure going for all of the endings and earning some fat yen bucks might give way to some more higher end endgame shit. As far as a single playthrough goes, the mechanics are woefully underutilized. Which again, isn't really all that bad considering the game is better off being short anyway, but it just takes out a lot of that sweet sense of progression you're supposed to get from upgrading your shit. And that, my dear viewer, is quite a poop. Anyway, despite all of that, it's still quite a fun little thing, little fun little fun little thing. It's not a great game by any means, but something about the 3D light open world Z RPG -y beat em up -y kind of stuff just really works for me. I can see it being very tedious and repetitive to a lot of people and in some ways it definitely is, simply based on its design and reliance on being in a single place all the goddamn time. But much like Yakuza Uno and Tuo, I kept on wanting to come back to it right after I stopped playing. And that's pretty cool. The game also has a wealth of well thought out multi-layered female characters. But all male characters are just the same nerdy guy template, which can only lead me to believe that this game is sexist. Yeah, don't think I'm not onto you, developers. <laughs> Jokes. The game has some mild dating sim elements based on which girl you girl with the most, and through it you can get tons of different endings. I'm not too interested to be honest, but the game's dialogue is tongue in cheeky enough for this to be considered funny. Again, this isn't a super duper serious game by any means, which you'd think it'd be totally obvious based on the premise alone, but I still saw a lot of people thinking that this was some weird ass hentai dating sim or whatever. But it's not about the sex in and romance in it at all. And for as far as the undressing goes, the game doesn't discriminate at all, as you can look at as much dude butt as your tiny little heart can possibly desire. Sexual.